Good afternoon and welcome to the August 15th uh, meeting of the City of Murfreesboro's Historic Zoning Commission. Um, it appears that we do have a quorum, so we'll call our meeting to order at 3.30. Um, first up would be the public comments section. Um, and Amelia, we don't have anyone to speak today, correct? No, sir, nobody signed up. Okay, so no public comments. So we will move right on to the next order of business to approve the minutes from the last meeting on July 18th. Uh, if everyone's had a chance to review those meetings, uh, those minutes, we would entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve as written. Jim second. first, Linda second. All in favor? Do we roll call this? Roll call. Okay, Ashley, do you mind calling roll for us? Here? I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm here too. I can't hear Ashley. Who'd you say? I can't hear you. Yeah, pull it closer. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Mr. Beckett? Aye. I don't think you have to push it. Mr. Salas? There we go. Aye. Mr. Thompson? Approved. Ms. White? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Aye. Chair Jakes? All right, then motion carries. The minutes are approved as submitted. All right, next up is our new business for the day. And uh, let's see, Roman, are you gonna introduce our first order for us, the uh, 500 North Spring Street? I believe Emilio is gonna introduce it and okay, then, I can, I then we can go over the process from there. Pardon me. Yes, Amelia, would you mind introducing this first uh, order of business for us? Sure, this is for 500 North Spring Street. It is with the United States Department of Interior, the National Park Service. It would be comments pertaining to the removal of the Collier Lane Critzlow House from the National Register as required by the Certified Local Government Program. The property is located on the north side of Spring Street on the northeast corner of North Spring Street and East Bell Street. The vernacular Southern National two-story single family house was constructed approximately 1850. The property contains approximately 0.43 acres and it is zoned RM12 with CCO overlay district and it is not in the historic district overlay. Uh, the Main Street Historic Overlay. All properties surrounding the subject property are zoned RM12. This property was also locally known as the House of Mayors due to several mayors of Murfreesboro that did live in this home. It was listed on the National Register of Historical Places on August 23, 1978 for its significance in architecture. The property displays elements of Georgian, federal, and Greek revival styles and features were were decidedly Victorian in character. It was determined to be stylistically transitional building and an important part of the architectural heritage of Murfreesboro. And I do have a couple of pictures that they did send um, that do show the home in, in its past days. The structure was demolished in January of 2023 due to its advanced stage of deterioration and inability to be habitable. In accordance with the National Historical Preservation Act, the certified local government will submit a report to the State Historical Preservation Office regarding the eligibility of the above mentioned property when it's up for removal from the historic register. The Tennessee's Historic Commission State Review Board is scheduled to meet on September the 20th, 2023 to remove the Collier Lane Critzlow House from the National Register. As a result of the demolition, the house has lost the architectural qualities for which it was listed and no longer retains the integrity of design, materials, workmanship, and feeling. The architectural qualities are what the State Review Board will act upon at their September meeting. And then again, I did place some pictures. Um, can you turn the overhead on? The one behind you, Zone. Oh. It, it really looked different. While you're working on that, Amelia, um, I think it's worth stating for the public, again, as you mentioned, this is not in the H1 overlay district. It is in a nationally recognized historic district. 
Uh, it was recognized by the National Register, but this is not a home that our commission has any say in whether or not it was removed. Correct. Um, so as a part of the cer certified local government um, program requirements, the Historical Zoning Commission is required to discuss this delisting and staff is to provide um, Historical Zoning Commission's comments back to the State Review Board about said delisting. Uh, and Mr. Um, Assistant Attorney uh, Roman Hankins is going to help lead us through the deleting, delisting of this project. Yes, so uh, speaking with the State Historical Commission, it's uh, a fairly straightforward process. It's similar to when, when a property is originally listed. You go through the same deliberative process. Um, if you look through the agenda packet, you'll see um, there is a review form uh, for uh, our body to fill out uh, stating whether or not we think it continues to be eligible or if it's no longer eligible for the listing and to state the reasons therefore. Um, as Amelia stated there, um, the most common uh, reason among uh, that's listed in the federal regulations for removing properties from the register is when they cease to meet the criteria uh, because qualities were lost, which were, you know, which caused it to originally be listed. Um, and as she went through, um, you know, the, the degradation of the property is, is the reason that uh, it's been brought before us today. So like I said, uh, apart from that, it, it's just your standard deliberative process. Um, any motion, um, you know, I, I would advise that it be either that it remain eligible or that it is no longer eligible and state the reason therefore. Thank you, Rome. Um, have any other uh, comments um, regarding? I have, I have a question. Even though it's not in our jurisdiction as far as the historic district, before this was raised, did, did the owner need to come before um, your commission and, and let you know what, what he was doing? That's uh, is that is that done behind everybody's back and then oh I didn't realize uh, it, it, that's probably outside the scope of my ability to answer um, I, from from my conversations with at, with the state I, I think this is this is not an unprecedented scenario where where a building is lost due to degradation and subsequent destruction and then it's delisted <laughs> after the fact. I Amelia. I do know that the, the applicants, the owners of the home, did pull permits from the Building and Codes Department for the demolition of the property. Go back, I, I did read through some information about the house and it was actually listed to be demolished when the couple that tried, that revamped it to get it on the historic list in 78. They just didn't, weren't able to get it completely done. And, and but they were able to get it listed on the National Historic uh, List. But in it, in it, they did come to the offices and they did pull their permits. They did get an estimate from um, a contractor, a local contractor to try to look at it and the cost was quite unbearable. Okay. So it was, a, it was former owners who really wanted to restore it. Yeah, the, the former owners that bought it, I believe in 1960, 74 I think it was anyway in that time frame they bought it they did a lot of remodeling they did a lot of refixing of a lot of issues in it um, new piping and new electrical they did several things to it at that time and got it back up to standards where it did not have to be demolished and then they had it listed on the National Historical Register and, and they, that was several owners ago it's in the core overlay district it right? is in the city core overlay so that district. made it attractive for as far as density and correct uh. okay. what is what what could be built back would it have to be a residence or could it be commercial it's rm 16 it would have i mean rm i'm sorry rm 12. it would be allowed to by right uh, depending on w how much they could structure and get parking for everything, they would have to get it laid out on a plan. But density for RM12 without our um, sewer ordinance, I, it, I would say they could get maybe three, uh, 
townhomes, maybe they could rezone it and possibly do something different with that. But they do have to follow all the design guidelines that would require parking, sufficient hard dustless surfaces, as well as um, um, lighting. But they, would, they wouldn't have to come to us because they're not in no, our sir. district. No, sir. I just would hate to see a Dollar General pop up there. I, I, I don't think that that would be the case right there. It's not zoned? No. no. It, it, they would have to rezone it. And zone. most of the area around there that has anything that's commercial, it's going to be um, commercial, uh, like an office general type of, of use. It's not going to be a straight commercial. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, we will need a motion. I move to delist the building based on its loss, its integrity, and it's been demolished. Jim, first, do we have a second? Second. David. Uh, Ashley, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Anderson? Um, aye. Mr. Becker? Aye. Mr. Salas? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Chair Jakes? Aye. All right, the motion is approved and the property should be delisted and we will move that towards the state. Yes, we'll, we'll fill out the form and then have you sign, Ms. Chair. Perfect. Thank you, Roman. All right, then that leads us to our next uh, piece of business here. Um, an applicant, well, I'm sorry, Amelia, would you, would you like to introduce our, our applicant, please? Sure. This is for 331 East Main Street, Mr. Jim and Kim Schultz. They're requesting review for fencing, new fencing and a driveway gate in a, an existing single family residence. This property is located on the north side of East Main Street. If I get you a pretty picture here. Um, the Queen, the brick Queen Anne style two-story single family house was con constructed around 1895. The property contains about 0.37 acres and is zoned RS10 and is in the HI district and is also located in the CCO district. The property to the north is zoned RS8. The property to the south is RS15. Property adjacent to the west is Junior Foodland is Commercial Highway, and properties to the east are zoned RS10. All surrounding properties are also in the CCO and a historic overlay. The applicant proposes to install a six to eight foot privacy fence along the west property line from the house to the sidewalk between their property and Junior's food land. The applicant also proposes a wooden privacy driveway gate. The fence will be, basically I'll show you a diagram of where they wish to put the fence. The privacy fence, it, this is Junior's parking lot to the, to the west. The fence would go from their patio at this area where there's already fencing where it stops and would they're proposing to go to the sidewalk the gates of course would be across the driveway um, this is just a diagram of how it would lay lay out on the property uh, the fence and gate will be visible from the right of way of East Main Street the style of the wooden gate fence is the applicant wishes to to erect was included in your agenda package. They have a couple of different proposed types of fencing, this being the, the proposed privacy fence option number one, and then just a basic proposed privacy fence number two. There are several uh, similar fences on the property, on properties located within the historical district area. The design guidelines for historic district states that fences may be added to a lot if they are similar material to other fences in the vicinity and they are co constructed so as not to disrupt the harm visual harmony of the front area of the lots. So the applicants are in attendance today and here to answer any questions that you may have for them. 
Mr. and Ms. Schultz, would you all mind coming to the lectern? Thank you, Amelia. Good afternoon. We are Kim and Jim Schultz, at owners of 331 East Main Street. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm sure you've learned now that's historically known as the Bell House uh, yes, of, of the Bell Jewelers fame and, and Bell Brothers Lumber, who built a lot of the homes downtown. Um, so welcome to the historic district. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I saw in your, I must say this, I saw in your application as well that you're both retired military. So I want to say thank you for your service, yeah. both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we're going to open this up for discussion. Uh, do we have any questions from our, uh, uh, Jim? Amelia, could you go back to that aerial view? I'm not sure where the fence is. Is it going to be up next to the junior's hedge? It's, it's the edge of the parking lot. What? The parking lot goes like five foot. Uh, go back, Amelia, to the Which one front, do you want? front elevation. That one. Mm -hmm. We see a hedge to the left and the driveway to the right where there's a brick right. fence. So where will it be to the left of the house? Along the, the hedge line. Is there a, I don't know, is there an actual fence within that hedge? No, no sir. Is that hedge and, on your property? People are able to, yeah. to. People have been walking through yeah. the hedge line. Yeah, right so it's on our property. Because the porch wraps around, yeah. and then we have a door that goes into the parlor there, yeah. and people are coming through the hedges, and they're, you know, it's not even five feet from the hedge line to our porch steps. So, uh -huh. you know, we're trying to eliminate have that you, in the trash. Have you surveyed where your property line is? Or are you going to put it on the property line? We're going to put it on the property line. Is, we, is it going to require uh, clipping back the hedge to put it on the property line? Just to trim it, not to cut it out. Probably to make it look better, because it's just basic weeds there now. That in the fall, when it starts dying, it's going to look really, I mean, our, our um, main goal is to make it look better than it does now, to yes. keep the Victorian era historical. I mean, that's the reason we bought that house. Can I ask, so who, who owns the, where the scruffy hedge is now? Is that you or that's you? On our, that's, that's on our, our property. property. It's your property. Mm -hmm. I, we've talked to um, the management with um, juniors and we've talked about um, putting, and they're, they're all for having a fence there. Um, I've talked about cleaning that area with the, you know, people like throw their trash there. There's also those weeds grow up so bad that they think that that's an area where they can um, throw excess um, tree limbs and stuff that they pick up once a month. So, that, so it's kind of like a, an eyesore really without the fence because people think it's just, oh, that's where they pick up the, the tree yeah. limbs once a month and everybody throws them over there. Um, we've actually bought a wood chipper just to try to maintain <laughs> um, the, the way it looks. And we pick up, I walk, and my husband, we walk Main Street every day, probably four or five times a day, and we pick up trash from our house all the way down to the square and back every day. And a lot of it is right there on that. that and it's, it's items that Junior's doesn't sell. So, um, and uh, my thing is when, when we bought the house and I started um, I noticed there's foot traffic that goes right next to our parlor, which is a bedroom. And um, one day there was a homeless guy just sitting on my, on my um, and I don't care if they're homeless, I don't care, just pick up your trash. But um, he was on my porch because they cut kind of through there to get to the churches that have the free, um, they have those free boxes. So they just kind of like cut through and it's, it's kind of a thoroughfare for whoever wants to go from the other areas through juniors to the other side of the the, the city and I, I me myself i don't feel safe that close to the parking lot for one thing and not, and not having some kind of barrier there um, from where the cars park to my um, parlor area and then also having people that can just come up there right next to my door. So my door is like where um, the reporter's sitting right 
that's how far they can get from the parking lot to my house. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how high do you intend to build that fence, the height? I asked for eight foot. It's just, that would be the same, but um, we put six to eight foot. So whatever would make it um, aesthetically pleasing there. I know that the easement is not a problem. Um, I've I've sat on you know I've lived in different places all over the country, and I know that you can um, be at Juniors, and there's no blind spots as you're pulling into in there, out there, and to the left. Um, there's plenty of, all the way to the, if, if we could do, just do a fence to the, the sidewalk on. I put six to eight f feet, we would be happy with the six foot fence. Okay. Well, for that matter, we're not allowed to approve anything but six feet, six feet or less. Okay. okay. There's, you have an existing fence in the backyard, right? Yes, sir. Is, is that a six foot back there? I'm not even really That's sure. Not, I'm not sure. And, and I'm it's, assuming it, it's, it has um, come before this. And I don't mission. think you would be able to see if it's not because it's the way the house is built. There's um, there's a turret type three window thing there, so you can't mm -hmm. really see that fence from the road. Mm -hmm. So I mean, a six foot fence would work mm -hmm. perfect. No. When you say, I'm sorry. When you say you're going to trim that hedge, will trimming it get rid of the hedge? No, sir. No, just to, to so make it look nice. Just to straighten it up so when yeah. they put the fence up, it goes right along. Yeah, we, okay. we're not going to cut any trees, any existing bushes, any anything that makes the place look, um, you know, more aesthetic. Do you know, we're not going to mess with that. Do you intend to paint the fence and the gate? No. If, if we Stain, need Stain, maybe. I mean, unless unless we're required to. I mean, I don't know that we have an ability to review yeah. paint colors. We can't review. I was just wondering. No, uh, no. Okay, so what what material are you going to use? It was in there. It's either um, Boya, cedar or pine. Cedar or pine, whatever. I would recommend you do cedar to last longer. And you can actually power wash it when it gets dingy looking right. gray and it looks yeah. brand new again. Yeah, cedar's great. That's what I have. I um, have a question concerning the fence running to the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, I walk that area a lot as well. And I, I have to admit, when you're walking that sidewalk to Junior, sometimes those cars come out to that sidewalk pretty quickly. That's a it's a little bit of a dangerous situation there, but the, the hedge is already there and that's what's causing yeah. that. Um, but I wonder from, from staff perspective, what the setback on the fence is. Amelia, are you familiar with exactly how far it should be from? The planning sidewalk? engineering department oversees that and they do require any fencing that's in a front yard um, be 20 foot from the back of curb and 20 foot to the back of the curb goes to the back side of the sidewalk. Gotcha. Oh. Good. Okay. Oh, what she said? It would go to the back of the curb. It would satisfy codes going to the back of the sidewalk. It's 20 feet from the okay. curb at the street. Well, like I say, the existing situation already kind of blocks your sight yeah. there anyway. Um, okay. okay. Any other questions? I have a question about your gate. Yes, ma'am. Could we, um, uh, could we um, approach that as a separate oh, item? I, yes. No, it's okay. I should have told you up front, but I, I think we should approve these I one at a time. Right. I'm sorry. I just want to know about mm -hmm. the gate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any other questions about the fence? Well, uh, Commissioner Thompson says we can approve an eight-foot gate. Is that historic zoning or I codes? I think it's historic zoning. I don't think you can do more than a six. Honestly, I thought it was just code. I didn't know you could allow over six foot privacy fence, but I'm not certain. I, I'm, I'm not certain that there's sure a height restriction the foot, in yeah. there on the. I'm not sure if it's yeah. seven. I don't. I don't know if there is on the building code. That's something we have to. I check. know we don't have it for building code. Yeah. Um, Say again, Amelia. I don't. I'm pretty positive we don't have it in a building code. But as far as the procedures for. Historic zoning. I'm not positive that there is a restriction. Okay. I'd like to move that we approve six and eight and six or eight. 
and if they find if we learn that they can do eight I allow them to do eight yeah. I will, I'll, okay. when you ask for a motion I'll and the plus for us for that is if we're sitting on the porch and it is an eight foot fence then we're not having the you know we're not looking into people walking to their to their cars or standing out there talking or whatever right. but I mean again six foot if that's all we can do that's fine I see the reasoning yeah I think we need to find out about this if we I thought we couldn't go build above seven. Could we make a motion and let the city determine then for the building permit? Yeah, the highest possible subject yeah. to. We don't want to have them and a have report, to come back. And a report back to us the next time what height, what the maximum height is within the district. Y'all okay with that? Be yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're fine with that, Kim? Yes, sir. But no higher than eight. You, oh, you know, that's yeah, possible. No, that's sure. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. Okay. Any motion? I move that we approve maximum height allowed up to eight feet, not to exceed eight feet. I second that. Is that good? Second. Okay, David, second. Um, any other discussion? Does, are we, uh, approving the oh, style we, yeah do you want to do that separate or make that part of this motion well we should uh, I think that should be tied together are we, are we going for this dog ear style we're gonna go for that gothic Victorian um, dog ear style if that's I mean I'm going to stay within the Victorian 1896 uh, fence I believe that's most appropriate and a good choice yes he needs to amend this could you amend that motion Jeff? sure so amended Okay. Uh, you comfortable with second that, David? Yeah. Okay, we got a first and second. Any other discussion before we vote? Okay, Ashley, would you call roll? Ms. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Becker? Aye. Mr. Salas? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Vice Chair Davis? Aye. Chair Jakes? Aye. <laughs> that motion is approved. Don't you outrank me again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right now we'd like to. Uh, I did outrank you in the military. <laughs> I would like to discuss the gate uh, to the east of your house and the driveway area that would connect between the house and the neighboring brick fence, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I'm happy to see it is located back a little ways. Um, and not right up at the front of the house. That's, that's, that's a, a, little more, a little more pleasing to the eye to push it back there a little bit. Uh, any discussion or questions about the gate? Well, that, that was my question, is where will that, where will that gate come um, as far as your house is concerned? Where, where will that hit, hit it, the edge? It's a, a good three quarters of the way it's back. the front, this is the Main Street. Uh -huh. It's and behind it, the. There's some there's a, uh, there's flowering a, trees there. Well, there's a there's a bay window there too, right. hexagonal bay window, and it's it looks like it's that. the back side. Behind yes. the bay window. Okay. I believe originally this would have been the back of the house. There was an yes, addition sir. there, right? And so it's it's about where the addition uh -huh. starts right there. back there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So if you, it'll help. You won't see that barn there either. Yes. <laughs> well, you see the. Top. And that man walking by. <laughs> <laughs> or the red truck. Are you wearing the same clothes? No. Uh, the, <laughs> as for the style of the wood plank, uh, I saw in the pictures one had a sort of a swooped style. Um, do, you, do you plan to try to match your fence? We were going to, yeah, match it to what was approved for the fence. Okay. Okay, I think that's. Will it still swoop with that style? I like the swoop. As long as it, if we could start with the eight foot and go down on that side, just because we have, we couldn't start at six and go down because we have a 85 pound dog that we're trying to keep in. <laughs> and he can jump that. And let's just say that city comes back and tells you it has to be six feet. Will it then be just straight across? It it's, won't be. A it's going to be in the Victorian. I mean, it's going to be, it's not going to be a commercial looking. It's going to be Well, I know, nice. but, but the one we approved for the fence, would be straight across. Be straight across, but if the, then if, it'll be the if, same. if the maximum height we can do, uh, the city allows you to do is six feet and not eight feet. 
it's going to be difficult to get the swoop without it right. getting low. So it would be the same. So it's straight across, across if it's mm -hmm. six feet. Yes, sir. Would you have a fixed section against the house because the bay window sticks out? Yes, when they're like a, this much of I'm it. guessing, what, three feet, something like that, it'll be right. fixed. The, the opening to the gate will, will actually be the driveway. 12 feet. And then the whole opening itself from the house to the brick wall was, mm, it was like 17 20. feet. So yeah, it only had a, a little section. bit. Fixed section. Mm -hmm. Right. It says 20 feet. 20 right? total. Is it 20? That's what your drawing shows. Okay, yeah. so you have about four feet on either side. Of fencing, it'll just be on the one. Well, yeah. Well, the driveway actually goes right up against uh, Mr. Bill's brick wall. Yeah, that he's got there. So it's going to be a double or a single gate. It was a. It's a double, and we're building it to where um, you, it can be electronic later. We're we're having it um, having it met the metal on the back of it so it doesn't slouch or anything and then later on we can make it a remote good good that was sort of where I was headed with that if you span too far with yeah. a single then it's gonna it's gonna ride it down and those are really difficult to power mm -hmm. so the double is a good choice there okay, any other questions if not we'll entertain a motion Mr. Chair, I would make a motion to approve the fence design, uh, excuse me, the gate design at either a six or eight feet. If it's eight feet, it'll have a swoop to it. If it's six feet, it'll be straight across using the same uh, board that's used on the fence. That'd be nice. Good. Second. Very detailed motion. Thank you for that, Jim. Uh, Linda, second. Any other discussion? All right. If not, could you please call the roll, Ashley? Ms. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Becker? Aye. Mr. Salas? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Vice Chair Davis? Aye. Chair Jakes? Aye. Uh, you have unanimous approval. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Carries. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right. And Thank you. Hope glad you enjoy the yeah. bell house. Yeah, glad, Thank you. You. glad you're so here. So far, so good. Yes. Thank All right, you. Amelia? Up next, do we have any staff reports or other business? Um, just a, other business. I sent you all an email a couple of weeks ago about a training opportunity by the National Alliance of Preservation Commission, uh, Commissions. Um, that it is a virtual class for two days. It's on August the 23rd and 24th. This, um, this would be provided. Uh, paid for by the city of Murfreesboro for anybody who wants to attend this if you could just let me know by Friday morning so I can get everybody signed up and get all the logistics worked out with it um, but this is, would be able to do it from your own home on your own computer on your time okay what are the times for it well the, I was explaining to some of them earlier the email that I sent you um, on the on the after the opening page when you come to each picture if you click on that picture it'll expand out into a whole two-page summary <laughs> who the speakers are and what they're going to talk about their bi biography and mm -hmm. what they're what they're going to um, talk about that day and the hours of each one I know on the first day the 23rd it starts at 10 then there's a, a lunch break and then it runs till four and then the second day the 24th of august it starts at 10 and goes to almost six but there, some of them are 30 minutes some of them are an hour you don't have to see every one of them you can pick and choose which ones that interest you and watch the ones you want to watch okay thank you all right wonderful okay do we have any other business there is no other business and no objection. We'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>